In the past six months, more than three dozen children have died in accidental shootings nationally. That includes a three-year-old boy in the upstate. With more guns than ever in the U.S., how can these deaths be prevented? Well, News 13's Evan Donovan has been looking into this. He has a special report on children and guns. Evan, this has been part of this debate, how to avoid these senseless deaths while preserving the right to bear arms. Well, yeah, Larry, most Americans acknowledge the Second Amendment as a constitutional right, but these are preventable deaths that everyone recognizes need to stop. This is the cricket rifle. It is marketed towards children as my first rifle and comes with a stuffed animal of the company's mascot. It's the same rifle used by a five-year-old boy in Kentucky three weeks ago when he accidentally shot and killed his two-year-old sister. Wayne Batson sells the cricket rifle at his gun store. How does it make you feel that that weapon is marketed towards children? Yeah. Well, obviously, I have children, and uh, I would buy you know, the cricket rifle for my son when he was of age. I felt like he was responsible enough to use it but I would never let him use it unsupervised. Guns also come in a range of sizes and colors that aren't necessarily marketed to kids specifically. Back in February at Haywood Apartments in Greenville, three-year-old Tamor J. Smith accidentally shot and killed himself with a pink handgun he and his sister were playing with. Mallory Moore owns a pink Glock and bought her daughter a gun for her fourth birthday. She has a little pink rifle. We keep it locked up in the safe so she can't get it. We've even talked about if it was out, is she allowed to touch her and she knows that she can't. According to a recent study by online magazine Slate.com, more than 40 children have died from gun accidents in the last six months. And while their views on different points of the debate may differ, both gun enthusiasts and gun control advocates agree on responsible ownership. I just want to see parents be more cautious of where they have their weapons. But now, if I was a prosecutor, I would, um, in, the, in all cases of death, with children, I would prosecute every parent. Uh, I would not look at it as accidental. Jack Logan is the founder of Put Down the Guns Young People, a nonprofit group dedicated to reducing gun violence. In addition to responsibility, he says another key is education. If that parent or guardian have a weapon at home, that weapon should be have a gun lock on it, and that weapon should be secured. But I, I believe in educating. All you got to do. And that point seems to have support from both sides of the gun rights debate. Batson offers classes of all types at his store and encourages people of all ages to educate themselves on guns as they would any other subject. It's just like driving a car. It's a, that's a weapon. If you go down the road and you don't know how to drive an automobile, that is a weapon. So we would prefer that you take some kind of education uh, when you buy a gun. In the hopes of reducing accidents. I think that's the most important thing when you have children and you own firearms is make sure you educate them about it. Don't just hide it. In a country where guns nearly outnumber people, it's advice that could help keep our children safe. Now, guns are in one, more than one-third of all households, and children as young as three have the finger strength to pull the trigger. So it's important to talk to kids and make sure they know what to do if they come into contact with one. Let them know not to touch it, leave the area where it is, and tell an adult right away. Also, law enforcement recommends you store your ammo separately from your weapon and to use one of these. It's a gun lock. You can get it for free at your local police department or sheriff's office.